What's going on? Today, I'm gonna bring you along as I work on my truck. This is part two, so if you haven't seen the first part, go check it out, I'll put the link down below in the description. As you guys can see, my truck is in a little bit of pieces, and that's because I'm working on it, finally. It took me a long time to get working on it. Give you guys a quick overview, I got my wheels and tires over here because I'm gonna be painting the wheels, plus I need to be off so I can get the rest of the stuff done. My bedsides are off, and right now we're working in the back. We're gonna flip the truck around later and get to the front, but we're working in the back right now. So we have the truck on stands, the bypass shocks are off, all my accessories back here are completely off, so my lights, bumper panels, all the wiring, jack, tool bin. So you guys would see me take all this off if you watched the first video. Go watch the first video. I decided to take a break from crawling around back here because it makes a 31 year old pretty sore. You are an old man and a fool! And work on these today. These shocks need to be polished. Well, I'm sorry, this shock needs to be polished. I did this one off camera just so that I can kind of get the process down because I wasn't too sure how it was gonna turn out. So here's a little before and after. You can see how grimy and dirty this thing was. There's just like road grime all over this stuff that degreaser and a microfiber towel just doesn't take off. So I actually used some Mother's Mag and Aluminum Polish and they're like magic ball uh, polisher thing and went to town on this thing. I also used some scotch right pads at first with the greaser just to try to get some of this crap down and off and I was a little nervous at first about scuffing it up but it looks okay. Considering this is how crappy it was looking I'm super happy with these results. It was super hard to get behind these bypass tubes. I just put a microfiber pretty much did it the way you like see people polishing shoes. Got back there the best I can. I'm not ready to rebuild these shocks. I just wanted to get them nice and clean so they can not look like crap on the back of the truck. I think uh, for spending an hour and like 40 bucks looks pretty good and then we'll do this one together the other thing that i want to experiment with is i got a, some wire wheel brushes and uh, some other stuff like that to clean up all my hardware and just see what's salvageable i mean i'm sure most of it's still good i just want to go through none of it's really rusty or anything i saw that you can clean them with like vinegar and baking soda and i know they sell some like chemicals that you can use uh so we'll look into that who knows running it against the wire wheel might just make them all clean or even just taking the scotch right pad and scuffing them up a little bit but we want to get these all clean and everything back on the truck looking presentable and good i also made a couple more trips to the store to buy some stuff i bought some satin black for the bed cage just another chemical sprayer for some degreaser and then i saw that walmart has a water-based bed liner coating it's super cheap the gun was i think 27 bucks and this is like 22 bucks so under 60 dollars i just wanted to try it out i figured it can't really hurt for the back side of my bed sides i want to coat them and it's pretty cheap so i figured i'd give it a shot i had actually sprayed like a rubber coating out of a spray can back in the day and it came out like crap so it doesn't hurt to give that a shot so yeah let me get this wire wheel put onto my bench grinder just so we can give it a shot on the hardware that way if not we can start soaking it in the baking soda and vinegar and then we will start polishing this other shock so the first thing i'm going to try to do is get this wire wheel brush onto my bench grinder all right so i got the wire wheel brush on the bench grinder and uh i cleaned up a bolt just to test it out so i think i got it on the right just had to take off this side cover and then you can see the arbor and there's a nut in there that's actually like reverse thread so you spin it the opposite way for it to come off there you go it's in there Okay, so the only thing that was kind of sketchy was I set like these two plates, uh, you know, far enough out to where the wire brush is not just smacking on them, but it's obviously a pretty tight fit. So, ow. ow Knights of Columbus, that hurt. Be careful touching wire brushes because one just pokes right to my glove, but it's a pretty tight fit so you can see like some of the brush bristles are kind of like hanging out the edge. And when I first turned it on, it kind of like self clearance. I felt a couple of them like busting off. So I threw my safety glasses on and stepped away. Uh, is there a right way to do this? You guys let me know in the comments. You see, it's kind of like off-centered. It bubbles out on the side. Same thing over here, but I don't know if there's any way to fix this or it's just gonna clear into itself and you just gotta be careful when you're using it. Anyways, I just threw this thing down and then I stood to the side over here while I was actually using it and I wore safety glasses, so that was my solution for now. Here's my upper shock bolt that I just uh, cleaned up with the wire wheel. You guys can see, obviously it was grade eight hardware, so it had that like gold finish that got super dull and faded over the years. So I decided I'm just gonna clean them up a little bit and get some of the grime off of it and then just, I might actually just use a microfiber and try polishing it with that as well. Polish them up and then put it back in. There is not like rust or anything, so I don't think I'm gonna have to do the vinegar soak method. Just pretty much clean it up. I probably could even do this with a scotch Brite pad, but I wanna test out all the methods. So I'm gonna try with the wire brush. I'll try with this like rust remover thing. And I'll probably try with just a regular scotch Brite pad and just see, you know, what level of uh, repair I gotta do on these things. But as I was getting the wrench that I needed to take off that uh, retaining nut, this is the size right here. What is this? 15 16 I don't even know where I got this wrench from. I got a couple of hand me down wrenches from my father in law throughout the year. I'm assuming this is probably one of them. But I might try out that method on this and just see how much I can get it cleaned up. Or I might just hit this with the uh, wire brush right now. What do you think? I say screw it. Let's try it. All right, 
there's got to be something safer than that. I'm going to have to look this up uh, or get some advice from you guys because little pieces of the wire brush literally shot out and stuck into my shirt like little freaking stakes. Look, they're like caught in my shirt. I guess I could have been wearing like my welding apron or something, but is that... Is that right? That thing just falls apart as you're using it? I know when I use like my wire oil brushes with my drill, some of them come off here and there, but they don't shoot out at quite that velocity, like to get stuck in my shirt like that. So there's gotta be a solution to that because this thing was coming out pretty killer. All right, so I looked it up and I watched a couple of videos and nobody has any advice. Somebody took some snips and pretty much just cut off like all the ones that are hanging out to the side. And a lot of people just uh, pretty much said it is what it is. Some people said that you could run it without the guard and that helps out. So I guess I'll just run it for now. Uh, uh, maybe I just have a cheap wire wheel. This is just a Harbor Freight one. If you guys have any experience or you got any tips for me, let me know. But it works pretty good, so I definitely want to make sure that uh, I'm using it. So next, I'm going to clean the misalignments. Some of them are kind of rough. Some are okay. So I just uh, wiped them off with some degreaser for now. Get off some of the dirt. That way I can see which ones are pretty bad. And then I'm probably going to give it a little whack on the wire wheel. So you can see this one over here, not too bad. Degreaser got it pretty clean. This one over here has all that grime from the shock. This is the bottom one. So obviously it's picking up a lot more dirt and stuff. And this is the upper shock mount. All right, so here is the after on these that came out pretty freaking good. I don't have like a pipe brush, you know what I mean? Like to clean the inside of it. So I'm just gonna have to try to shove a little bit of Scotchgrad pad in there. I couldn't find anything online about these coatings. So I'm gonna put a little bit of polish on them on the outside. I figured, uh, you know, if they get messed up by me using the wire wheel on it, then I'll just replace them. All right, so this is the one that I already cleaned and polished, so we're gonna put this one away for safekeeping, and then we'll start on the next shock. So I wanna show you guys up close, just so you can really see how nasty these are. I know I showed it in my other video. All of that stuff does not come off. I've scrubbed it, I've used every sponge, every degreaser, every soap, and that's about it how it looks so what i did with the first one is i tried to use this polish just right off the bat after just degreasing it wiping it with a rag and it was using up a ton of polish and i was just wasting it and nothing was happening so i was kind of afraid to actually scuff them up but after reading a couple of forums and seeing tons of people use straight up sandpaper on it i decided to use a scotch bright pad well i started with steel wool first because it's really soft and it wasn't doing the job so I used a scotch Bright pad. That actually got some results. So I switched over to the scotch Bright pad. I used that as much as I could. And then after I cleaned it back off, I went to the polish and I got much better results. So that's the process we're gonna do with this one. Hopefully I have enough of that mother's aluminum polish left. If not, I have to buy another one tomorrow. But like I said, I was using way too much because of the way I was doing it the first time. So I, I should need a little bit less this time around. So let's do the same thing. I'm gonna clean the last two misalignments, clean up the bolts, and then we'll get started on the shock. Let me just get a good before shot so you guys can see how nasty this is. I'm embarrassed. All right, so the misalignments and the hardware are done. I just cleaned them with the wire brush on the bench grinder. I think it actually did start to clear into itself because a lot less wires were shooting off this time around. So maybe after a couple times and I'll snip some off on the edge. Maybe it's fine. So maybe it was just a crappy start. I'm gonna put these together, set them aside. But the misalignments came out super good. You guys can see. Compared to how they were, this is a major upgrade. I already had dinner, but it's 10 o'clock and I'm getting super hungry out here getting this stuff done. So Lexi made me a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. So just a quick PB&J break and then we'll start putting in some work. All right, now that I'm done with my PB&J, we're gonna put this shock up in my vise. I have some rubber, like rubber grips that go in there. That way it doesn't mess up the shock too badly. So we're gonna drop those suckers in there. And then we're also gonna put a towel in the bottom. And then we're gonna take this sucker. I'll start by putting the reservoir in there. Not on purpose, but because that's what fell in. There you go. Now, now the shock's in there. That way it doesn't move too much. Oh my gosh, let me show you guys an up close view. Holy f are you guys okay? I just dropped you. I wanted to show you guys an up close view again. I know I've showed you like three different angles, but dude, it's actually like, because I know what the result's gonna be like, hopefully, cross my fingers, but it's actually like amazing how much, like how much you can feel this. It is so rough. This is through a glove. It is so freaking rough, and we are going to make it shine. 
Okay, so this time around, I'm just gonna start spraying your greaser. Um, I didn't tape off these caps. A lot of people tape them off, but mine are super jacked up. I figure if the blue is gonna fade, it's gonna fade anyways. Just be careful with your shock shaft. Obviously, you don't wanna get too much crap on this or hit it with anything. I was pretty careful around it, so I didn't cover or anything like that. I'm gonna start with just some simple green, mix with water. Spray it up, take my scotch bright pad, and just start going to town on it. All right, I moved to the floor just because it's a little bit more comfortable, actually. Once you're done using the scotch bright pad, steel wool, some degreaser, you're gonna go through with your microfiber and just kind of like buff it all out a little bit. Let it dry, and then you're gonna start using your polish. So I'm using this Mother's Mag and aluminum polish. I only have like maybe a fourth left, so hopefully that's enough. And then they sell this like buffing ball that just attaches to your grill. So I'm just using that. I'm putting it directly onto the shock and directly onto this, and then just going through and polishing it. And then as it turns black, it says that that's actually good. You spread that all around and then you take a microfiber and then you buff it as well so let's go all right so i'm all done this is the other shock i'm not gonna lie the, the first one that i did came out a lot better i don't know why either this one was just more dirty than the other one or there was some method to starting off with the polish and the other one ended up working better after all but either way i'm still happy with it compared to how it was before you can see some of the grime just didn't completely go away up here and then behind the bypass tubes was super hard to get to on both of them but on this one i couldn't get it as much but sitting on the back of the truck they're gonna look freaking awesome. I might need to update the stickers because those are just kind of chipping and peeling away. They're like cracked up from the sun. I'm gonna go ahead and give the process like an eight out of 10. I thought it was pretty straightforward, pretty simple. It just takes a lot of elbow grease. I'm sure if I had a real buffer, it would work better. Considering I have this drill already and that power ball was like 20 bucks and the polish was like five bucks, I'd say it was well, well worth it. I probably spent under 40 bucks to get all of this done. And I think that it looks like a couple hundred dollar upgrade just by cleaning it all up. As appearance, the shocks were looking like a 3.5 out of 10. And right now I'd give them a solid 7.5 out of 10. So I'd say that's a huge upgrade. There you can see the sticker on this one got completely shredded on one side. But the side that sticks out is gonna be the bypass side. So I'll look into maybe making some custom stickers or ordering some new ones from King and yeah guys pretty freaking happy So if you guys have shocks that are aluminum body that look disgusting have road grime on them Just go to town with some aluminum polish and uh, some scotch bright pads And I guess you know at the end of the day I was afraid to scuff it up But they looked like crap So I wasn't gonna make it much worse and one day when I have them rebuilt or I'm upgrading parts or whatnot Maybe I might get the bodies powder coated for a quick turnaround nice upgrade I'm very happy with how it turned out 10 out of 10 if you count that thank you guys for watching the video if you guys have any questions questions for me let me know down below in the comments check me out on instagram at just king adrian i'm on tiktok at just king adrian make sure you guys subscribe to the channel and turn on post notifications i'm going to be posting a couple of videos like this in a row until i get the truck completely done and the last video in this little series will be the full walk around of my f-150 pre-runner it's been a long time since i've done prep on the truck so i'm really excited to get out here and start doing it i snuck out here for the last couple hours of tonight it's sunday so we took my daughter out to yoga this morning had some coffee ran some errands and then i, I just was motivated so i wanted to get out here and get at least another part done off of the list so what we got done today was make the shocks look pretty again but there's still a lot more to go and I'm trying to edit and upload these videos ASAP but really guys I appreciate you watching this video thank you for the comments thank you for the support I hope to blow this channel up a lot more than it is it's growing at a slow steady pace I'm super pumped on that though I mean it just blows my mind that, that many people want to watch me work on my truck and one day hopefully it's a lot more so keep watching peace